Yeah, my name is Louise Kosh. I am from Denmark and it's really getting winter now. And today we're going to make stuffed bell peppers and blanche spinach in the raw version. So absolutely no cooking whatsoever. And I find that here in the cold north, especially when it's really winter, one of the ways that people can stay raw is actually to make really nice dishes because I find that so many people are struggling to stay raw. It's really incredible. Personally, I normally escape to the tropics during the winter and I don't have that problem this year. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to travel. So maybe I will even be making lots more what I call gourmet raw food dishes. Because as you might know, there's different types of raw food. Um, yeah directions to go in there's high fat there's high fruit and there's vegetables mostly and like I've chosen the one that is high fruit and so normally I would just eat all the fruit that's behind me on the platter here um, but today I'm gonna make a high fat dish and that is basically because it contains one and a half avocado and some pine nuts and that's make it that's making it high fat but on my diet, you can eat some fat, that's totally okay. Uh, but just so you know that I'm not eating this every day, this is just once in a while, if I want a little treat or something to make it easier to stay fully raw. And I really think that the more dishes or yeah, recipes you have, the better you're gonna survive long-term fully raw. So I hope you get a lot of inspiration from what I'm making today. I came up with a recipe for the stuffed bell peppers myself because I basically thought this is a cook <laughs> this is a cook cooked recipe and why not try to make it in a raw version and so I did and I like it even better now. And the same with the uh, blanched spinach. We're going to add some stuff to this for sure. But um, this is actually a totally new recipe. I haven't shown it to anyone yet. So you're the first timer, so to speak. And yeah, it's uh, hopefully gonna be something you enjoy a lot. And first I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna be using, the ingredients that we'll be using. And then I'm just gonna dive right into the recipe itself. Okay, and if you do have some preparation related questions like Doug said, just please, yeah, write, ask me or write your questions in the, uh, in the chat so that Doug can answer and yeah, but um, I, ha I have a comment, Louise. Sure. Well, um, you look absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love your setup you. and thank you for putting so much effort in that. It's such a pleasure to see your smiling face in that beautiful green, pink, red, yellow <laughs> colors. It just make it so more interesting and enticing to follow you. And also, Thank you so I am much, Larissa. Yes, and it's so such an really... honor to be on the show as well. Thank you. Yes, and I'm also grateful that we're inspiring you to make those new recipes for everyone's enjoyment. Yeah, if it wasn't for the show, the blanched spinach wouldn't have happened. So, I just thought we needed some little side dish for the, the bell peppers. So, I made it for that. Okay, let's get right into it. So if you're cooking along, so to speak, you've probably got most of these things ready already. The tools you're going to need is something for juicing lemon with. I have this little thingy here. You need some spoons and some knives, preferably a short and a large, well, small and big one. A scissor to cut some of these. And then if you want a little grater, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use this, uh, the nice small knife instead, but it's optional. It's for this uh, nutmeg thing. So yeah, let me put this aside. Oh, and I got a little bowl here for uh, the rubbish. And let's see. So first of all, with the ingredients for the first dish. So, so we'll start with the bell peppers. And I've got three 
fairly large bell peppers. I hope the stuffing will be enough, but we'll see. Otherwise, I'll only be half full. So it kind of, the recipe was made for a slightly smaller uh, stuffed bell peppers, but oh well, we'll make it happen. I got some chives straight from the garden. I love to grow these. Yours might be smaller, that's perfectly okay. Um, two avocados, some pine nuts, and do remember to leave some for the second dish for the spinach as well. I got five tomatoes plus an extra because, because they're kind of on a smaller side and five uh, mushrooms as well. Oh, I could show them here as well. <laughs> we got two cameras. And then I've got um, my um, soaked sun-dried tomatoes. And that's for the first dish. For the second one, we need the blanched spinach, which has been frozen and defrosted. And we got some sesame seeds, some spring onion. Oh, there is spring onion for the bell peppers as well, one for each, some nutmeg and orange, sorry, orange, lemon, lemon for both the dishes and some cilantro. And I think I've covered it all. Right. Oh, and potentially some garlic if you want that in. I'm going to skip it, but it's there. Okay, so um, this dish is around 750 calories. So when I wrote the recipe, I didn't know if I should write one or two persons for this recipe. Because if you're a fully raw, high carb person, this would make a meal like 750, you're good to go if you've eaten this. But if you're a total newbie, then one of these might be enough for you because you'll be so full and you might want to eat something else at the same time. So it depends if you are new or trained in this. And um, yeah, I also oh, forgot to mention, I have a big bowl that we'll be mixing in with a spoon. And that's about it. So let's just start with the most important thing, the bell peppers themselves. So the first thing you're gonna do is remove the stem and you do that with the small knife. So we're not really gonna use any machines or advanced tools. It's just gonna be chopping and cutting and super simple, squeezing a bit. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut, oh, I can do this view here. So you wanna cut all around the edge here and then pull out the middle and just pour out as many seeds as you can. So let's give it a try and be careful because knife might slip. So I'm just gonna carefully make my way around like that. Oop, I think I made it and pull this out Oop, there. And see if there's any more seeds and just remove all of the leftovers in there. The white stuff is not that tasty. Um, yeah, so now you got a bell pepper that's perfectly ready for stuffing. And I'm just gonna put it on the plate and do the other two. So cook along. <laughs> so one more. And you really decide how big you want the hole to be. It can be a tiny one or a big one. No rules there, totally up to your preferences. Yeah. Actually, there's another way of cutting this as well, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, because I've got a little extra tip for you. There, that was number two. I'm going to do number three exactly the same way, just for the pictures. But I have actually a fourth one that I've been saving just to show you something. Somehow I just don't like the taste of the little seeds. I don't know if you do. They're just not my favorite. <laughs> okay, so that was the three ones. And what I want to show you is this. So what I did before, well, actually last night, I took a bell pepper 
and I put it in the freezer and it just became really soggy, saggy, what do you call it? Like soft and a totally different texture. So I find it really interesting to see what happens to food when you freeze it. And this kind of gives it a way more cooked look. So presentation wise, this could be really interesting. And the thing is with this one, the bottom is not flat, so it doesn't stand up straight. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it in half the, on the long line, so to speak. And this is full of water because yeah, it was frozen. So I'm pouring this out. And so another way of doing the bell peppers, instead of having them like this, could be just to put stuffing in here as well. So it's totally up to you. Then you can make smaller portions as well. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you um, the, the fun texture of a frozen bell pepper. Right. But um, one, another thing I wanted to talk to you about is maybe you bought some bell peppers that doesn't really stand up straight. So what do you do? And what I would do, mm, these are pretty good, all of them. Well, maybe this one. What you could do here is to simply just cut a little bit of the bottom, but without making a hole in it and just see, does it stand better? Actually, I made it worse, <laughs> but just like that. So they will stand up straight. Um, yeah, but I deliberately chose these bell peppers just to make sure they stood up straight. Okay, so next up, we are going to take the avocados. And here, a little tip is to see if they're right by removing the stem. And this wasn't, one doesn't look very promising actually, but we'll see. But then it should be green in there if it's perfectly right. So let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, it's not too bad. Definitely usable. And a little trick for the, the seed in the middle is to take your knife and just twist it and it comes out really easily. And there. And this is the point where we need the big ball. So maybe put it on the other side like that so you can see what I'm doing. So at this point, you want to get out the larger spoon and just scoop it all out into the bowl and if there's any black spots you want to remove that there and as you probably know like avocados have to be fairly soft in order to be ripe so this one is pretty good i always squeeze them in the supermarket not the best thing but it's the only way i can kind of figure out if they're the right right ones that I want. Um, and then of course I know where to get them like generally. I know which places have the good ones and which ones have the rubbish ones. So yeah. Okay. There. And let's see. I have some black in the middle here that I'm gonna just chuck away. And also remember to remove the end bits. They're not that nice to chew on. So there. I also find that eating some fat, fat, like fatty dishes every now and then can make it easier to stay raw, especially in the winter. Somehow it just it gives you that mm, feeling of being full in a different way that you sometimes crave during the winter. Uh, but yeah, more like maybe a cooked meal would do. There we go. But on my diet, the 80-10-10 one that, yeah, Doug knows all about, um, we prefer to eat a lot of fruit. Just tons and tons of fruit. Let's check this one, if that's that. I'm not having luck with this uh, test, <laughs> but normally it should be green in there. And this one looks pretty good as well. Let's see. So that was one, and then I'm going to do the other half in there. Oh. Don't, don't put it in too hard because then you can't get the, the, the stone or seed. I don't know what you call it, but get that out. So I'm just going to take half and add it 
to the mixed. Yeah. Okay. Got most of it out. Yep. And in the bin. How are you doing out there? Working on the avocados? Good. Yes. And I've got a little ball here for rinsing my fingers. There. Okay. So next up, we'll do the tomatoes. And we're just going to chop them. And finally. And I would prefer a larger knife for that. So what I'll do is I kind of half them. And this is a point where you have to watch out for your fingers. You want to keep them, right? So I kind of tried to like curve them like that. Um, so they're not pointing like that. And then you're going to chop them off. <laughs> so try to, I know this is going to be hard because they're, um, well, it's a small tomato, but like that there. And just, whoop, put it in the bowl. And you just chop all of them and add them to the bowl. Do, do, do. Okay. And when it comes to tomatoes, for some reason, I really like the smaller ones because I find them way more tasty. Like often some of the, the ones this size are not that, like the supermarket ones, they, mm, they have lost their taste. But then you get the really big heirloom tomatoes and they can be amazing. So it's sometimes just such a hit and miss with tomatoes. Um, but yeah, if you can even grow them yourself, that would be fantastic. There, there, okay, and one more. And like I said, I wrote five in the, in the recipe, but if they're on the smaller side, you could use more. If on the yeah, larger side, you could use less. And, And would you say the size should be about what half inch? Oh, we measure in centimeters, so I'm a bit off there. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Um, I think the ones I had just maybe a wee bit bigger would be fine. Um, okay, so the next on my list would be the mushrooms. And it's the same thing. We're just going to chop them up and add them to the mix. Okay, and you could chop them whatever way you like, um, whatever you find easiest. We're just going to make them fairly small. I find that especially the tomatoes is what gives the dish the flavor and the avocado gives it the creaminess and then the various like chives and spring onions is going to give them the thing together with the lemon. And then we have the pine nuts that are going to give it a nutty flavor. So it's a little combination of a lot of things. Oh, and the sun-dried tomatoes, of course, they're going to give it a depth that's, yeah, almost going to make it more like cooked. Mm, there. <clears throat> And just chop all of them. And try the technique that I did with the tomatoes, where I splice one in the middle and just kind of roll them. You can also just do it like that. I'm trying a third technique here, just making slices and chopping. Right. Okay. Next up is the sun dried tomatoes. And you've hopefully soaked them, and that is because they generally come with a lot of salt in them. So we want to get the salt out and just hydrate them just to make it more digestible, so to speak. Um, there. 
And in the recipe, I said one and a half. So I'm just going to throw one half away. You can put all of them in if you want. Totally up to you. And I'm just going to try to chop them finely as well. So first I do some long strips here. And, um, yeah, and then I try on the other angle. And again, watch out for your fingers. We like to have fingers in full, <laughs> full length. And this dish, I actually chose it because it's one of my favorites in my retreats. Um, people just think, wow, this looks so good and it tastes really good. And so I just thought, why not make it here as well? Um, there. Um, next up, we go for the spring onion. And this is pretty exciting for me because last time I was on the show, I started crying when I was cutting it and hopefully it's not going to happen again. So I'm just going to water my knife a bit with some water on it. There. Um, I checked one earlier and it wasn't bad. So I'll give it a try. So I'll just do fine little slices. And I threw away the bottom bit. I don't know if you saw that, but I just, um, yeah, chucked that away. These little roots there. So don't need those. And you can actually eat all of the green onion, like way back when I didn't know anything about raw, I would only use the bottom bit. But today I know that I can use the top as well, just as good. So it depends on how much of the onion you want in there. Um, I think for me, this is probably gonna be fine or else it's gonna be too oniony, but like, like that is fine. And as you can see, it's stuck together. My knife didn't cut through it. So you can just kind of half it, be very careful here um, and half it again. And I really like to use spring onions because they're not that strong. Whereas red onions, regular onions, they're way stronger and my body just, doesn't like it. So the same with the chives, actually, like they're so mild that my body <laughs> doesn't react, but it gives it the thing that makes the dish taste really well. And so I just think, yeah, do you use spring onions and chives? Don't be afraid of that. But red onions or big round white onions or whatever, I would not use that as much or even at all um, too strong for me. So maybe do a little bit of like this. And put it in there. And I'm not crying that much, only a tiny bit. <laughs> right. Okay. Then we have the lemon. And we're going to use half for the bell peppers and half for the uh, spinach. So I'm just going to put that aside. And then you just want to juice it and pour the juice on top of everything. There. Oh, this chopping board is a bit wobbly, but uh, it works. There. And. That's it. So pour it in. The meat as well. And because I'm filming on my phone and I have to be online, sorry for this. I couldn't switch off my phone because I have to be online. So uh, yeah, my dad just called and I had to <laughs> tell him to go away. Sorry. Um, right. And that was that. Next one is, um, let's see, the chives. And again, same procedure. We're just going to chop them finely. The easiest way I find when they're this long is to just cut them in smaller portions and put them next to each other like that and just chop away. This is. You can the tell your dad to join the show and watch I you. should, I should. 
I'm not sure his English is that good, but uh, I should. And yep, so you'll get a medal in chopping when you're done with this show. <laughs> and I hope you can keep up with me. Are you doing okay out there? Yep, doing great. Awesome. Anybody asking questions in the chat? There's lots of chat. There's there's over there's 40 chats. Nice. Dr. Yeah. Graham has been taking care of them. Okay. So what do we have up next? We have the garlic. And so I peeled it and Basically, again, just chop it really finely. Um, I like to do little slices on one angle and then maybe slice it on the other direction as well, like that. And then see if you can make tiny, tiny bits out of it. If you do have a garlic squeezer, you can use that as well. Um, but just like that, see how small you can get them. There, that will do. Okay. And I'm going to pass on putting this in the dish because I want to eat the dish and I don't do well with garlic. So I'm just going to place it here. But of course, if you want garlic, you just put it in the dish and it's going to taste amazing. And then we have the cilantro. And I got some fresh organic stuff here. This is Danish, of course, it's called organic. And at this point, you need your little scissor. I've washed this, so if you haven't, of course, go and wash it. And how much did I say? Uh, half a pot. So we'll just do half a pot, or as much as you like. If you're really crazy about it, you can just do more. But um, some people actually don't like cilantro. And it, I believe, is some kind of gene that makes it just not taste very good it makes it taste like soap so if you have that you could replace this with for example uh, basil or any other herb that you like it doesn't have to be cilantro I just love it absolutely love it and again here you just chop it um, roughly like that and maybe a bit oh I can smell it already it's it smells so good. There. And put it in there. Okay. And the last bit we got to add are the pine nuts. <clears throat> and it says two tablespoons. But like I said, we're going to use some for the um, blanched spinach as well. And we're also going to use some for decoration. So take two spoonfuls, but not all of it. Okay. Like that, I think is good. And that was what goes in the stuffing. So at this point, we are going to try to mix it all together. Oh, round spot. And to be honest, I actually find it easier to use your hands. So if you're not picky, then do go and if you haven't already, wash your hands. And then we're just gonna massage everything together with our hands. Give it a try. Because we want this to be a big um, lump of like sticky goo, especially with the avocado in there. It's just gonna be totally like mixing everything together. Um, and this is almost impossible to do with a spoon. So if you are not afraid to get <laughs> sticky hands, do, do give this a try. And you just want to like all the avocado bits, you want to crush them. Um, so it's all nice and well, small, small pieces like that. How are you guys doing? You got sticky fingers? So see if I can get all of this off my fingers. 
I'm just going to leave you for a sec, sec and rinse my hands. But you just massage away and maybe do the same. There. Okay. Well, this is the exciting moment because we're going to fill the stuffing into the bell peppers. I really hope that I made the right amount for these three. And worst case, I'm only going to fill two. We'll see. But um, it's kind of hard with the, the size to figure out how much goes in there. Um, but in the meantime, you can also clean up your kitchen a little bit. If there's anything we're not going to use anymore, you can just put it to the side. So we're ready to make the uh, blanche spinach afterwards. Um, so I'll take the avocado and the spring onion to the side, the bell pepper that was frozen to the side. And what else there? Well, this is kind of pretty. I'll leave that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave the um, lemon and this and that. And we can take out the sun-dried tomatoes as well there and that's and that okay well then i'll continue with the stuffing and now i can only see you duck but that's a very beautiful sight as well so i'll be happy with that <laughs> there i am i'm back okay um so yeah you just kind of start filling them put the stuffing in there and see how much it takes it doesn't have to be like squeezed in it can just be Nice and loose, like that. And make it look like it's very yummy. And there. Well, maybe that's enough for all three of them. Looks like I calculated right. There. Oh, maybe I should put it on the chopping board so you can see it there and put this in number three more than enough that's perfect mm. all right i even got a little bit so after. good sorry delicious oh great good to hear um, so I can put a little bit on top there and I'll lick the ball later. <laughs> okay. Right. So we've got the little plate out because as you know, presentation is everything, right? <clears throat> so I'm just going to put them here. And then sprinkle a wee bit of the pine nuts on top just to make it look even nicer like that. You could put some on the plate as well and on the floor. <laughs> but we're going to put the uh, blanched spinach down here as well. So it looks really beautiful. OK, I'll put this to the side and then it's time for blanched spinach. And um, yeah, let's see. First up, we're going to use the spinach, of course. And what I did was to simply, as you've probably seen from the recipe, put a package of spinach in the freezer. But first, I washed it, I rinsed it out, and put it in a plastic bag. I yeah, closed it up, and then I just uh, let it sit there overnight. And I love to play with textures because then from that, you get this soft leaf that looks a bit like if it was cooked but it's fully raw the only thing is it's full of water so i'm just gonna pour the water out like that i could even squeeze it a little bit there's a lot of water in there there and now we're gonna give this some taste <clears throat> and let's uh, start with some lemon Oh, sorry. I totally apologize for that. That would be my phone holder crashing, falling to the floor. It's kind of slipping out. Oh, bummer. 
we might have to go to the other view because this does not look like it's sticking. It's kind of sliding. Um, yeah. Or like that. Oh, that's a pity. Maybe it can sit like that. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. This is when it's live. Things don't always work out the way it should. But um, we're good, I think. Right. So squeeze the lemon and put it on top. So we kind of marinate it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I love lemon. It gives a thing to almost any dish if you can somehow put it in there. I'm gonna share one of my favorite green smoothie recipes that's actually with bananas, arugula and lemon. And the lemon just makes it taste amazing. So if you've never tried that, definitely do that. Um, all right. And put these fibers in there and the juice and let it sit and marinate a bit. Okay, you might want to use your fingers like that. Okay, next up, we're going to chop the spring onion as well. And we're not going to use as much as before. We could actually, well, maybe you want to do that. You could use the leftover that you had from the other dish and just use the rest of that. That should be enough. So. One way to do it is to just slice it like that first, and then you have done some of the chopping already. And just chop away. I hope you can still see what I'm doing with this angle. We can see it. We can see it. You great. Great, Luis. Awesome. Thank you. And just make sure to get your fingers out of the way. <laughs> Don't want a red dish by any chance. There, and I'll throw the tops out. Mm. And just if anything is sticking together like that, I'm just going to give it an extra little slice here. All right. And if you're not that fond of onion, of course, you can just use a tiny bit or none at all. That's totally up to you. I just like it because it does make it taste a bit more cooked. Um, there. And then just add it to the spinach. That. And mix it all well. I'm, I'm going to use my hands here. It's just so much easier. And you might notice that I'm using some of the same ingredients with the bell peppers. And that's simply because it kind of adds to each other to be similar. So the tastes are not completely different, but we're gonna add a little bit of difference to this one that's not in that one. So in the bell pepper, you have the cilantro and in the spinach, you're gonna have the nutmeg. And that's gonna be the difference. Um, so let's see, I've got it all massaged in nicely there. So oh, I'll rinse my fingers. There. Next up, let's do the nutmeg. So maybe you have a nut like this and you're not going to use all of it. That would be way too much. We're just going to use a tiny, tiny bit. And I think actually nutmeg is one of the most overlooked uh, things you can use in a raw kitchen. It does add a really special, nice flavor. I like it. So I have a, a little leftover here that I'm going to use. And at this point, you can either get your grater out and just grate some of it on top or do what I'm going to do. I'm just going to like use a little knife and scrape off, it off a little bit. Um, not a lot, just a um, couple of scrapes. And you really got to watch your fingers here, like that. 
Okay. And again, massage it in. Okay. And the next bit we're going to do is the sesame. <clears throat> and it says one to two teaspoons of sesame. And I think one and a half maybe could be good. And also one to two teaspoons of the uh, um, pine nuts. And I like them a lot. So I'm going to put two in there, maybe even a little bit more. And those were all the ingredients for this dish. And then again, you just massage it all really well together. And like that. Okay. And finally, this is a big moment. So maybe Brian, if you want to go to the full, full view. Uh, uh, we're gonna decorate it. Yes, there you are. So we'll put them on the plate here. And I can put it here. And this is where you just want to decorate it beautifully next to the uh, bell peppers so that it looks really appetizing. Almost like something you would get in a cook kitchen, right? Okay, and we could put, how does it look in the front? We can put some in the front as well, and on the sides, just sprinkle it around on the plate. Oh. And there, and you might even want to like sprinkle if there's any bits and bobs in there, just sprinkle it on the plate. It's all going to add to the decoration value like that. And then you can drink the leftovers if you want. <laughs> it's going to be very lemony. Um, and that would basically be it. There you have it. Stuffed bell peppers. Completely like look alike if you would make them in the oven or something. And uh, I'm sure this is going to taste amazing as well. I hope you're going to like it. Um, like I said, decoration is everything and try it. Like even if you cut it as boats instead of standing up, you can still make it look really nice if you kind of decorate it with stuff around it. Um, this is a point where you're going to take pictures, right? So now get your cameras out. I'll get my fingers dry. Yes, please take pictures. Louise, that yes. looks so beautiful.